What's going on guys? Today, we're gonna go through something a little bit more basic that maybe you're looking past and you shouldn't be. We're gonna talk about how you can protect your personal device from hackers and threat actors. So you get a new computer, Maybe you even have a computer that's just been sitting around that you use um, for school or you know just regular browsing of the internet and you never really considered, are you doing what you should be to protect your device? Now, this is important for two different things, right? The first reason is you just don't wanna be vulnerable to having your PCs infected and potentially giving access to threat actors, whether it be cameras or personal files, pictures, anything like that obviously is a no-go. So that's reason number one. Reason number two, if you're somebody looking to get into cybersecurity, this might be a question that comes up on interviews where they're gonna ask you, you know, what are you doing to protect your network or what are you doing to protect your personal device? And it's something that you maybe wanna consider implementing so that you can answer that question in a way that proves that you do care for the security of not only organizations, but your own PCs as well. So let's get into the first one. The first one's something that maybe you do have on your device and it is very common to uh, have it pre-installed when you first get your PC and that's going to be some kind of antivirus tool. Now the free ones that you get when you first buy a PC, they're junk. Just get rid of that. Um, you don't want to use that. Now it goes on to say that you want to check that you're not expired as well. Maybe you're somebody that has an antivirus that has expired and you have never really kept on top of it or went through and looked. So you want to keep the antivirus up to date as well. Now I'll give you one that I recommend. Um, I recommend two. One of them I use and one of them I used previously. Um, AVG is a good free option uh, for a antivirus if you want to use that. Uh, you can buy a premium membership to Malwarebytes. I think that's like the next step up and is a little bit better and has more tools that we'll talk about as we go through the video. So look into those two. Uh, I really do recommend Malwarebytes though, as that one is better. Now, it's not enough just to download and leave it, right? You gotta go frequently open up the application, check any of the alerts, any of the notifications, just like you would do in the real world. This is something that you should be getting used to because in the real world, you're gonna have to do this every day anyway. It's just not your device, it's gonna be your company's devices. So get in the habit of doing that when you log onto your computer, check your recent scans, make sure that it is scanned recently, check for any vulnerabilities it sees and see that you remediate them. This is a great way to get good experience and um, an understanding of the workflow in protecting devices. Now, the next one is going to be browser security. This is something that you may overlook. Browser security is something that attackers use to download malicious files via internet browsers, whether it be you know a URL or a file or some kind of executable, etc. And if you don't have a good browser, browser security, maybe it's gonna let that happen and infect your device. Now, this is what we call layered security. So it's gonna hit the browser first, hopefully the browser denies it, and then it'll hit the antivirus but you want that in place, the browser security. It's a second layer of security, and I have one that I recommend for you. Now, the most basic one, and this video is kind of a basic video. I don't want people going out on the limb spending too much money, um, but if you want to, there are other options, but the good free version is Chrome. Chrome offers safe browsing with enhanced protection. It has a list of different things that it blocks, but you need to make sure that you turn this on. It doesn't come turned on when you first get Chrome downloaded. So be sure that you go into the settings and go into security and turn on this feature. Now, the next thing that you want to do that 
is not done for you when you first get your device is encrypt your drives. It depends how many drives you have, but you simply can go over to the drive in the file explorer, right click on there and encrypt it with BitLocker. This way, if anything were ever to happen with your data and it was compromised, that an attacker will not be able to read the data that's on that drive because it is encrypted. Now, when you do this, you're gonna get a key, an access key. You wanna make sure that you do not lose that because a lot of people lose it and then you got yourself in a big uh, problem and you can't access your drive data, but you definitely want to encrypt your drives. Now, when you start up your computer, right, you're going to do what? Create a username and a password. Be sure to make sure that that password is strong. Recommended 12 to 16 characters with special characters, including uppercase, lowercase, and special characters like exclamation points or pound signs is crucial especially if this is a laptop device that you're going to be bringing with you to you know a starbucks or maybe sitting down with a group of friends out in public outside you want to make sure that when you lock your device that nobody can guess that password whatsoever so 12 to 16 characters guys include special characters and upper and lower case now the last thing i want to go over I bet you some of you, maybe I'll say, I bet you most of you haven't even considered this or checked to see if it's available to you. And that's gonna be encrypting your files. Now, if you're somebody who's running a version of Windows Pro, you will have this capability. If you're somebody that's running Windows Home, you unfortunately will not. It's not a capability that comes with the feature set. So if you're somebody with Windows Pro, you can go ahead and encrypt files also, not just the drives. You can go to a file that you're working on, you right click it, you hit properties, and then you select advanced, and then you can encrypt that drive's data. This is gonna ensure that your data is not only protected at a drive level, but protected at a file level. And this is what we're talking about with layered security. Make sure that, you know, from the top down, you have security controls in place that an attacker, if they gain access to one file, that they don't have access to the other files or vice versa. Now, you can encrypt all of them, but you can also just encrypt the ones that are important to you that contain some personal information. It's a good way to upkeep and protect your system. But that's all I got for you guys. I wanted to explain some key ways to protect your data and your family's data from attackers. And this way you'll also protect yourself and gain some insight on what you can do to protect systems in a layered security approach. And then you can bring this to an interview. You can bring this to an organization, the skills that you've learned by doing simple stuff like this. So go check your computer, check these things that I've just mentioned, and make sure that they're all being done to keep you as safe as possible. I'm Cyber Tom, guys. If you're new to this channel, please subscribe down below and welcome to the Cyber Tom family and look out for the latest videos coming out next. I'll see you guys later.